New at 10, 7 News reviewing hundreds of pages of prison documents, all linked to the man who gunned down Colorado's prison chief and a part-time pizza delivery man. Tonight, we're breaking news about Evan Ebel's parole officer, but our team coverage starts with Marshall Zellinger, who's uncovering red flags about Ebel's behavior before his release. And Teresa, that's revealed in hundreds of pages of documents we've obtained. This one PDF has 38 pages. As I change to this one, another 28. What I want to point out in this one is 13 days on January 15th, 13 days before Evan Evan Ebel's release from prison. He was kept on the highest level of solitary confinement because of incidents of negative behavior, things like causing a facility disruption and making threats to staff. Uh, two weeks after these notes, Ebel was released straight from solitary to the real world. Six weeks later, parole officers would be surprised when he disappeared. On multiple occasions, parole leaders have told 7 News Evan Ebel had complied with his parole up until the day his ankle monitor triggered a strap tamper, an indication it may have been cut off. 7 News found that's not entirely accurate. Among the hundreds of pages of electronic documents we've reviewed, we discovered on February 21st, Ebel was found with a man at his home. That man is on probation. Based on Ebel's parole, he is not to associate with any person with a criminal record without permission of his parole officer. Even before he was released, Ebel showed a history of bad behavior and taunting, knowing he would get out in January 2013. In July, six months before his release, an officer notes Ebel said he would leave the country when released and not to parole as he has family that live outside of the U.S. On December 15th, more than a month before his release, officers report Ebel was not listening to directions. An officer wrote that Ebel said he had a, quote, lot to do when he got out. As a result of this behavior, he was placed on the highest level of solitary confinement. On January 15th, just 13 days before his release, Ebel did not attend his hearing to get out of solitary and was kept on the highest level. On March 14th, Ebel cut off his ankle monitor. He suspected of killing Nate Leon on March 17th, then Tom Clements on March 19th. On March 21st, he was killed in a shootout in Texas. These new documents reveal his cause of death, a gunshot to the forehead. While Ebel was misbehaving, he wrote these three letters in prison during the last six weeks of his sentence. And we told you about these letters earlier in the week. Essentially, he asked the prison, shouldn't dangerous inmates be around other human beings prior to their release? And again, Ebel was released straight from solitary. Reporting live, Marshall Zellinger, 7 News. The Call 7 investigators continuing to break new information on the way the parole division handled Evan Ebel's case. I've learned Ebel's parole officer is a member of what's called the gang unit. It's a specialized unit created with the sole purpose of strictly and closely monitoring violent gang offenders on parole. These officers get more training and also carry much lighter caseloads to make sure their parolees don't abscond and commit more crimes, in Ebel's case, murder. We're not releasing his parole officer's name tonight, but I've learned he is also a member of another elite group of officers called the Special Response Unit, a tactical parole unit that works with other law enforcement to handle high-risk escapees and arrests. This is just the type of officer you'd expect the Department of Corrections to assign to a parolee like Evan Ebel, who the DOC identified as high-risk. So why did it take five days for anyone from the parole division to respond when Evan Ebel absconded? We're getting answers on that. We're going to reveal them as we get them.